Yeah, yeah. It's this. Well, I started astronomy in 1976. By 78, I was building my own equipment. Joined the Los Angeles Astronomical Society in 76 also. By about 1984, I had a cave astrola mount that I had modified extensively. And one of the gentlemen from the club said, why don't you build your own mount? You have enough equipment to do it. And I said, hmm, that's a good idea. So that's when the GM100 came out in 1986. Then in 1992, we started making them for a major company. Did that for five years until 97. And in 97, we broke apart from them and started making them on our own and selling them. Well, at the time we built the mount, there was, which was a GM100, which looks very much like the G11, there was no equatorial mounts really out there. You had, you know, a couple from Japan, I think, but most of it was all fork mounts and no equatorials were out there. And so we started doing that and just happened to come out with a very good design that was you know, really has not changed much over the 30 years it's been out. Uh, it's, uh, I was always trained by my father when he says, when you build something, just add extra holes so that you always have something to come back with to bolt on. And that's what I always did. So we always have holes there. People go, what are these for? And I go, don't know yet, you know? So it's just, it's a good thing to have and it's always worked out well, so. Oh, I think what, we're trying to do with our mounts is give a very accurate and stable platform so people can start getting into longer photos. A lot of people are just doing these one minute shots and then they stack them. And it's, it's the thing is, is you want to get five, 10, 15 minute shots. But when you start doing that, your mount has to be very accurate. You know, a lot of mounts can't do it, and all you can get away with it is like maybe one or two minutes. And our mounts, you can go into 15, 20, 25 minute shots with it. And that's, I think, what will keep the industry going because people get tired of looking at the same one minute photo stack, you know, 60 frames on it because you just can't go deep enough and get into a lot of information out of the photos that with that sh you're just taking a lot of short pictures you're missing a lot of information and especially if you're getting into h alpha type things where your photos are going to be you know 40 hours by the time you're done with them you know and that's and i think that's what will help you know keep the industry going What I love about astronomy really is the mechanics. I love building mounts and constantly working on them to make them better and better and better. We've been building mounts now for 36 years, and so have a little bit of background on that. So and it's a professional tinkerer, you know, building go-karts and just taking machine shop in high school and all that is just really just a love of machining and never took any mechanics courses or engineering courses it's just all from trial and error and you know just a constant work in progress to make them better and better My goal is mainly to make a mount that is extremely accurate and it will just stay that way because it's machined accurate. We don't try to use any kind of, you know, systems that will compensate for errors. We try to machine everything so there is no error. Uh, that's my main goal in, in the mount industry. So I love the mechanics of old equipment because they just make things do the most incredible stuff with just mechanics. They don't have 
solenoids or you know, every, it's just all just hard mechanics. You know, it's like a weight drive system for the old telescopes. It's just a, this weight driven mechanism, and that's what all these are. They're all systems that are mechanically incredible. And the people that have designed them were just brilliant. I think quality is, I like the way old stuff is built because it's still here and still working and it's 100, 125 years old. And I think that's influenced me in making products that are gonna last you a lifetime. And also I try to make it visually pleasant to look at too. I don't want it to look like, you know, a casting or something I mean, because we don't cast, we machine everything. And so I want it to look good. And that's what I get from older equipment that, you know, antiques that I buy is they're beautiful. You, you can just stare at them. You don't even have to use them. You can just sit there and look at them all day. About 1998, 99 area, and I was at a trade show, uh, NAB in Vegas, which is the National Association of Broadcasters. It was a film show. And there was a company across the way that was making this eight axis motion control system. And I knew one of the guys there, so I went and talked to him and I said, oh, who, where did you get the electronics from? Because I wanted to come out with a, a servo system for our mounts. And he says, oh, this, this gentleman right here in the booth built it for us and all. And so I talked to him and he was into astronomy. So I hired them to make up the servo driver system. Problem is it had no smarts at all. It was just a servo system to run motors. Then just out of the blue, couldn't have been more than a week after the show, I get this email from a gentleman in Germany saying that I'm designing a go-to system for your mount. Would you be interested in it? And I emailed him back in one of my long emails as usual saying yes. And about six months passed, I got the servo drive system from the company. A week later, I get an email from him saying, okay, I finished it. And I said, is it servo or is it steppers? And he says, steppers. And, he, and I, so I told him, I said, oh, I have a servo system. Can I send it to you and see if you can get the two to talk to each other and work? And I said, I'm going to be out there actually in a couple of weeks doing a trade show in Munich. And he said, sure. So two weeks later, I met up with him, stayed at his house for about a week, and played with the system. And it was unbelievable. And from there on, he's been constantly doing all the programming for it. And so uh, and the nice thing is, is if there's something somebody wants, says, oh, it'd be nice if this go-to system did this, I just email him and say, can you do this? He does it, and you just download it into your Gemini, and it's going. And it's just, they've just been upgrading the electronics, mainly because after about every 10 years, you can't get the parts anymore, so you have to just change to new electronics. And that's why they're where it is now. It has nothing to do with it's better, it's just couldn't make it the other way. But they constantly get better because the programming's better, the chips are better, and all, so. That's a C6 F8. Built in 1969, they only made 50 of them. It was nice that they picked our, our plate to become the standard, and it's probably because we were the first ones out with a system, and it just made it, I think, so much better for all the astronomy people out there that they did decide to stick with one side and that size and everyone just basically copied it from us but it made it so much easier because now people can interchange their telescopes and all that and so it's uh i don't look at it really as a achievement or something it's just it was nice that they picked us but um that's all i can say on that <laughs> 
Warning! Warning, my foot. Be still, you bubblehead. Look, it went on. Rush. Kill. Destroy. I like Lost in Space TV show. Just thought it would be so neat to be able to fly around there, and I think that just got my interest in the stars and all that, because every time I look up to the stars to this day, I just would love to see them find life somewhere else, you know, any kind of life. And just a dream before I die that that happens. Mm -hmm.